again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of knitting with the Irish Knit Stitch. It's very simple. I think it's going to be pretty versatile for your various projects and that you're really going to like it because I love it. You know, it's great. It's simple. It's only a four row repeat. Two of the rows are exactly the same. The other two are very similar with the exception of the beginning and ending of the row in order to create the staggered eyelet look. Yes. So a little bit of a lowdown. For this particular swatch, I used size nine knitting needles. I believe these are a 5.5 millimeter. Yes, they are. And uh, as far as the yarn, it is Lion Brand's Pound of Love. I don't recall the colorway. I want to say it's a it's a lovely shade of blue green. How about that? Um, and uh, as far as the multiple, it's a multiple of three. So without further ado, you know what? Let's get started, shall we? Okay. Alrighty, so first things first, as far as figuring the cast on, the multiple's very, very simple. It's only a multiple of three stitches. So you can make this piece as wide or as narrow as you want to. Now, that being said, if, for argument's sake, if you wanted to make this into a scarf, nothing saying you can't do that. However, I will say this, this is essentially a stockinette stitch, okay? Not a garter stitch. So what I mean by that is that you purl on one side and do your essential knitting stitches on the other side. So it does have a tendency to curl a little bit. It's not severe, but it curls a little bit. So what you may want to do is add a border. So you would do that at this point when you're doing your cast on. And so if you wanted to, you could add an additional even number of stitches, um, stitches on one side and then on the other side um, to help reduce the curl. Um, also, you would start off the pattern by doing a bunch of rows, either in garter stitch, seed stitch, what have you. I just jumped right into the pattern. So that, you know, may help you out a little bit. I mean, I think it looks lovely on both sides, don't get me wrong, but because we're purling on one side and essentially knitting on the other side, it will have that curl if you don't add a border, just so that you're aware of that. Okay, so cast on your multiple of three stitches. I did 15, and we're going to hop right in. Okay, row one. By the way, one last thing before we get started in on row one. I did the knitted cast on, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, I will provide a link to my tutorial in the description box down below. So, first things first for row one. Going to start by knitting the first two stitches. And the first row is always the hardest because we just did our cast on. So knit the first two stitches, and then yarn over, slip the next stitch knitwise. So you're not knitting, you're just slipping it off onto your right needle. Then knit the next two stitches. It would help if I went into that stitch, wouldn't it? Yes, knit the next two stitches. That's one. And two. And then pass the slip stitch. That's the one that's sort of tilted there. Pass the slip stitch over those two knit stitches. So scoot right in, pass it up and over and off of your right needle, like so. So we did two knits, a yarn over, a, a slip, a knit two, and a pass, okay? So then we're gonna do that again. So yarn over, 
slip as if to knit, knit the next two, and pass the slip stitch up, over, and off. Yarn over, slip the next stitch, knit the next two, Slip the slip stitch up, over, and off. There we go. Yarn over. Slip the next stitch. Knit the next two. Pass that slip stitch up, over, and off. And then knit that last stitch. There you go. And that is row one. Obviously, it doesn't look like much at the moment, but we will get there. Okay, row two. Row two and row four are going to be the same. It's just purl stitches all the way across for the row. Not a big deal. Um, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to do one of the rows for you. And then after that, see, I was almost knitting with my tail there. <laughs> it happens even to me. Um, so yes, I'm going to show you how to do a, a purl row. Basically, you're just starting off by going underneath your working yarn and going into that first stitch in the front and do your purl stitches. And this is why I was saying before that this is, in essence, a stockinette stitch because every other row, we're doing purl stitches. So it's sort of a respite from the pattern every other row, which is nice. And then row three, we are essentially going to be doing the same thing as row one with, like I said before, a slight difference at the beginning and end of the row. But the rest of the row is exactly the same. And I will show you a bit of a trick to determine whether you are on a, a row one or a row three, so that you don't need to follow the pattern specifically. I did for quite some time, and then I got to the point where I, oh, I can identify the stitches. I can see where I am, and that is what I want for you. So we are almost done with row two. This last one here. And there we go. So all of our stitches are nice and purled. And we're going to continue on to row three. Row three. Okay, so now if you recall, row one started with knit two, then yarn over, slip, knit two, pass the slip stitch over, and then proceed. Well, for row three, we're going to start by just knitting one stitch. And 
And we're not going to yarn over it, not yet, no. After knitting one, you go into the slip the stitch, then knit two, and pass that slip stitch over. And then we continue on in the normal fashion. There we go. So we did our knit, slip, knit two, pass the slip. Okay, now I'm going to proceed in the usual fashion. So yarn over, slip as if to knit, knit the next two, and pass that slip stitch up, over, and off. Yarn over, slip as if to knit, knit the next two, and pass that slip stitch up, over, and off. Yarn over, and slip. Knit two. Pass the slip stitch up, over, and off. Now, when you reach two stitches, and you just did your uh, passing the slip stitch off, yarn over and knit the last two stitches. Now, the reason why we end with a yarn over and the knit two is because we didn't begin with the yarn over after the second stitch. That's why it evens itself out. So you finish by yarning over and knit the last two. It's important to keep the number of stitches consistent throughout. So I yarned over and knit and knit because if you add an increase without incorporating a decrease or vice versa, you end up with a constantly changing number of stitches. And if you want a square or a rectangular piece, well, you don't want to do that. So that is the end of row three. Now, what I'm gonna do is row four, I'm gonna do that off camera. It's just a purl row all the way across, nothing different from row two. So I'm going to meet back up with you for row one, and we will do a repeat or two, okay? I will see you in a flash. Okay, so row one for the repeat. Now, before we actually do the row, I want to let you in on a little secret about how to sort of read the pattern what I was alluding to before. Now, as you can see here, we have three stitches and then a stitch right above the eyelet, which is where we did a yarn over in the previous row, because we did a knit stitch and then a slip stitch and then knit two and then pass the slip stitch over and then the yarn over, right? So, that is how you can determine where you need to go next because row one, if you recall, was knit two, then yarn over, which would be this stitch right here. So that's gonna create the staggered look. This will make more sense as we go on. I just wanted to bring it up now. So let's do row one for the repeat. It will become more obvious as you keep progressing, but I wanted to bring it up early at any rate. 
So for row one for the repeat, you knit the first two stitches. Then yarn over, slip, knit two, and pass that slip stitch off. There we go. Got it. Okay. Yarn over and slip. Knit two. Pass the slip off. Yarn over and slip, knit two, pass the slip off, yarn over and slip, knit two, pass the slip off, and then knit the last stitch. There we go. And then row two, just purl your way across. Okay, and I will meet back up with you for row three. Okay, row three for our repeat. Again, I'm mentioning this. So you can see that we have two knit stitches and then an eyelet, which means that we need the eyelet to, well, we need it to shift over to here, above this eyelet over here, which means that we're going to need to knit that first one, then slip, then knit these next two, and then pass the slip stitch over, uh, and then do our yarn over, okay? So that way, if you can remember um, how the rows start as far as the difference between rows one and row three, you can then identify which of those rows needs to go next. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the stitching, shall we? So for row three, going to knit the first stitch, and then slip the next, knit the next two, and then pass that slip stitch up, over, and off. And then do our first yarn over of the row right now. Yarn over, slip the next, knit the next two, and slip, well, pass the slip stitch up over and off. Yarn over and slip, knit two, Pass 
past that slip stitch, up, over, and off. Yarn over, and slip, knit two, pass the slip stitch off, and again, because we started our sequence not with a, a yarn over, you yarn over now at the end. So I did our knit two and pass the slip stitch over, so yarn over and knit the last two. See, it's not just me telling you what the pattern is. I also want you to understand why we are doing what we are doing within the pattern. Sometimes it really makes things click and seem a lot less scary, and that's the idea. So we are making considerable progress, no? All right, so for row four, purl your way across, and you know what? I think we're going to do one more repeat because I like to be thorough and I like spending time with you. So that's what we're going to do. All right, I will see you in a bit for the repeat of row one. I just need to do row four off camera, purl row, and I'll be right back. Okay, so row one for the repeat. Again, we're going to be doing the knit two yarn over, and that is going to bring our first eyelet on this. Let me scooch that, and that right here is where our first eyelet is going to be, which is where this eyelet is down here. You have to keep in mind the staggering of your eyelets. Okay, so let's hop right in and knit those first two stitches and then hop right in to our patterning. So knit two, yarn over, and slip, knit the next two, pass the slip stitch over, yarn over, and slip, Knit two, pass the slip stitch over, yarn over, and slip. Knit the next two, pass the slip stitch over, yarn over, and slip, knit the next two, Pass that slip stitch over, and then knit that last stitch. And there you are, and that is the end of row one for the repeat. And so for row two, I'm just going to purl my way back across, and I will meet back up with you for row three. Last, but certainly not least, row three for the repeat. Now again, 
So our first eyelet is right here, but we need our eyelet to be above this eyelet, which means it needs to be over here. So that being said, going to knit the first stitch. And then slip as if to knit. Knit the next two. And pass the slip. Yarn over. And slip. Knit the next two. Pass that slip stitch over. Yarn over. And slip. Knit the next two. Pass the slip stitch over. Yarn over and slip. Knit the next two. Pass the slip. And then finish by yarning over and knit the last two stitches. There you go. And then of course, for row four, you would then purl your way across. Alrighty, my dears. So that is going to conclude today's tutorial on the Irish knit stitch. I really hope that you liked it. All you have to do is just keep repeating those four rows over and over and over again, and then you can do your bind off of choice. Me personally, I like what is I refer to as a super stretchy bind off because I have a tendency of binding off rather tightly. The link to that tutorial will be in the description box down below as per usual. And if you like this video, please give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation and I love showing you new things and trying to teach them and, you know, trying to demystify what can otherwise be rather intimidating. I know that for the longest time I was very intimidated by lace knitting, but when you break it down and you understand why you're doing what you're doing, it's a lot less scary. And that's why I, I, I'm trying to share that with you guys. Yeah. So listen, until next time, you know what to do. I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody, and bye for now.